Right in this video, we'll have a look at how to debug your application. So let's say that we take the same ID application that we had before, that we built before, and instead of entering the ID number there, we will actually add nothing into that field. And if I click on Submit now, you can see that it says, My Magic ID application has stopped. So there's, a, there's some or what problem that's going on. So in the bottom, you can open up uh, the bottom there and click on log cat which will give you an indication of what went wrong and you can see there what went wrong here is that there's a string index out of bounds exception you can you can basically scroll up and down in this window to, to look for errors but they will most probably be in red so you can see there it's string out of bounds exception uh, that was when we tried to use the substring and it was in the on click in line number 33 in the main activity so what you can do is to just click on this link and it will take you to line 33 inside of your main activity where the problem occurred if you do not have these line numbers you can just right click in this uh, gray section there and say you see there mine is gone so you can right click and say show line numbers so your line numbers must be on for this to actually work uh, what we're going to do next so make sure that you can see your line numbers. So you can see basically they told us that in this line something went wrong. So if you look at your application again, let's open up the app again. You can see that we want the user to enter something there. If, he, if he's not entering anything there, then when I try to extract the data from that string, which is called uh, the ID number, there's nothing to extract. So I'm basically extracting something that doesn't exist and that's why it's giving me an error. So one way to find these errors is to go to the locket at the bottom and try to figure out what went wrong. But if that is impossible for you to see what went wrong in the locket by looking at the exception message, then you'll need to go into the debugging of your app. So what we'll need to do then to debug is we will use some breakpoints. So you'll see on the left hand side when you click there, it adds a line break. So it's this little pink line that goes over the screen. It adds a line break for your application. So what is a line break? When we run our application now, you'll see that we want our application to, when it gets to this line that's giving us the problem, it should stop right there. Okay, so the line break allows our application to stop where we want it to stop, and then we can step through and see what went wrong. So in order for you to run your application to work with the debugging tools, you need to run it with this button instead of the normal play or the run app button. So you're going to click on debug. You're still going to choose your telephone to run it on or your cell phone to run on. In this case, it's the virtual device. And you wait for your debugger to attach. And then okay, you'll see there it attaches. And now we can start entering data. So if I just click submit now again, you can see my application now stopped at this line. And now I can see what's going on. So now basically it says to me that this ID number variable, that one there, contains nothing and now again if, if at this stage you, you haven't uh, noticed that you've entered nothing there and trying to extract from nothing something then you will see it here okay so this is another way to do your your breakpoint or to debug your application so i'm going to take away that or let's just stop the the application and i'm going to leave the breakpoint there and let's run it quickly again uh, not the normal run so let's just stop it and we'll run the debugger, click on OK, and let's look at the application now. So there, the application, we're waiting for the debugger, it starts, let's enter any ID number. Let's say something like that, and we click on Submit, you can see it stops my application there. And now I can see the ID number that was entered was this value. So now I can see there is something entered. And I can now use these controls. If you if you drag up this a bit, you can see that in the console, it gives you a few values there. You can see that the ID number is there and so forth. So I can click on the step button there, step into button. If you click that button, it will go to the next line. And now in the next line, you can see then in this date of birth that was actually extracted was one, two, three, four, five, six characters. So you can also use this way to check whether your application is extracting the correct data. And now you can see it goes to the next line and it tells you again, that's the ID number. So we can step into the next line again 
and on that line now it will tell you that the gender was equal to 5. So you can see there's the 5 and the ID number was this. And now we can you can see the gender is 5 there and it will basically set your um, S gender to be female. So this is just a nice way for you to step through your application in order to check whether you're extracting the correct data or whether there's an error that is currently occurring. So I'm going to stop this again. So another type of line break that we can get is a temporary line break. So this, this is a normal line break. If you go to the run menu at the top and you go down to, you can see there's toggle line breakpoint or toggle method breakpoint or toggle temporary line breakpoint. So I'm going to use the temporary one quickly. So you can see there it created a temporary one. Now the temporary one just means that when you get for the first time you get to this line, it will execute that breakpoint, which means it's going to stop your application there. But the next time it gets to this part, that breakpoint will be removed and your application will not stop there. For example, if you're running this in a loop and you add a temporary breakpoint there, then you know that it will only go in the loop the very first time the loop runs. It will execute that temporary breakpoint. So you've got normal line breakpoints and then you've got a temporary line breakpoint. You also have, if you click next to a method, you'll have a method breakpoint. Now the method breakpoint is a bit more expensive. It takes a bit longer because it stops your application at the beginning of your method and it also stops the application at the end of the method. And then you can step through. So now the last breakpoint that I quickly want to discuss is the conditional breakpoint. So for the conditional breakpoint, I'm going to use this part here. So you just add a normal line breakpoint and then you right click and then you can see you can add a condition for that breakpoint. So let's say we want to stop our application here if we see that our S gender is male, for example. Then we want to stop and step through it. So then I can add the breakpoint, right click and say where S gender, and you can see it picks up your variables there. If S gender dot equals normal Java coding dot equals male. So I want to stop the execution of the program only if the gender is male. So we're going to say done there. So you can see there's a question mark next to it. It's a conditional one. It will only stop here if the gender is male. So let's see if this one works. I'm going to run this quickly. All right, so let's type the ID number. So that number five there means it's a male. So I'm going to make it, let's make it a female there. And if I say submit, you can see everything went fine. It's female. But as soon as I make that one a five to make it a male, execution of the program stops and I'm directly at that breakpoint. So this is a conditional breakpoint. And uh, you can put any number of conditions there. And from there, you can use the step then to step through every step to see where is the problem or what data gets extracted or whatever you want to do. So that is a conditional line break. So for any of these line breaks, just clicking on it and clicking on it again will place it there or remove it. You could also add a conditional for any other variable, for example, an integer there. So we can say they add a conditional statement there where the gender, uh, the gender value is equal to, let's say, a 5. Okay, we'll keep on getting this problem because we need to stop the debugger. Okay, so I'm going to click on, let's say, S gender there. And we can also get, search for the gender value there to be equal to 5, for example. So it's normal Java coding, any Boolean expression that you can add here in the condition part. So that is it basically for debugging your application. So play around with the debugger will help you a lot when you need to or when you get into some big trouble with your application, you don't know where to look for errors, uh, your debugger could be a great source of help.